Hello and welcome back to the channel. If you haven't already, give me a like and subscribe. It goes a long way. Today's information is courtesy of my good friend Jim Claiborne, who interviewed, collected news articles, and eyewitness accounts many, many years ago. And also, Dale Snap, who, of the White Pine Historical Society, provided me with the pictures. Well, thanks to you guys. Some great people. I'm glad to know you. Hope you enjoy it. When the early 1900s is brought up, usually the subjects are the Great Depression, World War I, the Roaring Twenties, or gangs. Well today, we're discussing a bunch from Claiborne County called the Bunch Gang. Specifically, a feller by the name of Clarence Bunch, also known as P. Jim, or the Fox of the Mountains, who at one time was East Tennessee's public enemy number one. Now before we get deep into this subject, it's important to note that Clarence was never actually put on trial and was never found guilty of any of the following crimes. However, there were several eyewitnesses that identified it, him and his gang in the crimes, and I will be reading this in order of which the crimes happened throughout the 1930s. Enjoy. Clarence M. Bunch was born in 1911 to Hugh and Maddie Bunch, and he was one of about five kids from a small Claiborne County community called Bunchtown which was said to be one of those places that the law didn't go into without a reason. Now from an early age, P. Jim was a troublemaker. It's been told that he was drinking corn liquor and stealing cars and racing by the time he was 12, and running shine on the legendary Thunder Road by the time he was a teenager. It was in 1933 when he robbed his first bank in the town of Ewing, Virginia. Now he was captured by the Knox County Sheriff's Office and arrested on a warrant that was issued for the Ewing robbery. It would be at this time when he was in jail, that he met Gus McCoy, a feller from White Pine who was in jail for forgery, and John Campbell, who was in jail for robbing a store. Gus McCoy, became known as Machine Gun McCoy, was one of about 23 kids born to Dan McCoy to two different wives. Now Dolly Pardon is his niece, and he was also the last person in Tennessee to be electrocuted. The men would bust out of the jail in May of 1934, and they shot jailer C.J. Melton in the arm. The men had been mopping their sails and called for Melton to come get the mop as he opened the sail. Bunch was said to have drawn his thirty eight pistol on the jailer as he ordered him to step away. Melton made an attempt to disarm Bunch and was shot in the arm. The jailer was the only one present at the time, with Sheriff Smith being in Chattanooga at, the, at a political convention. The men ran up to a high school where Will Hayes was parked in a V8 Ford car. They forced him out of the vehicle and sped off towards Asheville. They would run out of gas about five miles from Newport and ran into the woods. Now, it's thought that Bunch got the gun from his uh, significant other, Nell Payne, by hoisting up a blanket with the gun attached to it from the outside. On the 9th of July, it was reported that two unmasked men entered the Citizens Bank of White Pine and ordered cashier R.C. Bell and his assistant, Miss Margaret Armentrout, to open the vault at gunpoint. After taking as much as they could carry, they then forced the innocents into the vault, although they didn't lock it. They made their getaway in a maroon 1930 Ford sedan and left in the direction of Newport, shooting their machine guns into the air wildly. They made it as far out as Cosby, which had been used by other bandits as a hideout in years prior. I don't know about you guys, but that's a pretty backwoods place. I can see why they went there. Now, over the course of the next week or so, they were reported to have shot all the windows out of the buildings in downtown White Pine robbed the Beats Filling Station and Bean Station, and robbed some innocent tourists near the former home of Senator John K. Shields. It was said that in a July 12th edition of the Morristown Daily Gazette that the residents of White Pine had formed a mob and had been buying up ammo at the local hardware store in order to do a little law enforcement of their own. By the 23rd of July, the gang had continued their depredations on the north side of the Clinch Mountain, robbing truck drivers and many tourists of their money and belongings. On the 1st of August, the men had led officers on a 300-mile pursuit through six East Tennessee counties over the past week prior. Squads of police cars gave chase to a maroon V8 Ford with license plate number 220-793, and it was believed to be carrying Clarence, Gus McCoy, and Gus uh, Charles Bounds after they'd robbed and held up 11 people at Lee Springs near Knoxville. However, officers were not able to overtake the car, as it had turned onto a side road and evaded the pursuit. Knox County Sheriff J. Wesley Brewer and his men abandoned the chase late Monday night when the bandits abandoned their car and fled into the wilderness of the Canyon Valley near Lone Mountain. D. 
Two V8 Fords would be captured by the Knox County Sheriff's Office and identified as the property of W.L. Henderson and E.F. Goddard, which had been used by the gangsters in their escapades on the highways. By the 5th of August, Bunch was being publicized highly as public enemy number one. In the days prior, he had robbed two roadside lunch stands in Fountain City. He first hit the Ideal Cafe on North Broadway and held up Mr. McMillian at gunpoint, who had attempted to reach for a shotgun under the counter, but was shot in the hand and dropped to the floor until the men left. Then they would later rob the Camp de Lynn, which was a roadside sandwich stand in a beer parlor, and the trio held up Mr. C. E. Rucker, his wife, and a few others. One of the men pretended to drop something and then came up to the register with what she described as a large pistol. The trio took tobacco, money, and other merchandise. However, they did overlook a bag containing $50 of silver and paper money that was hidden under some candy boxes that they had kicked around while trying to scare the victims. And while all of this was happening inside the restaurant, C.A. Bernard of Marable reported that a tan Plymouth was going up and down the road at a high rate of speed. It was also said that the bandits were so calm that even though there were several people in the lunchroom, none realized what was going on until they were already gone. Tom Long recalled an encounter with Clarence Bunch. He said it scared me to death. He drove up and went to our spring house, and he was waiting on John Spoon, who was another outlaw, and kept looking out the window. He said, now I had $200 in my shoe, and there wasn't a soul in there but me. He got a Coke and a pack of crackers and sat there and talked to me for a while and said, well, I got to go see my partner. Long recalled that Bunch was an ordinary man, nice looking and well dressed. He had an outlaw sheriff that he worked with. He didn't want to kill nobody and wanted money in a decent way. He brought five men into the hotel there in Blaine. One below and one above entered the hotel and had the folks exit the hotel and they lined them up one at a time and took what they had and sent them on their way. Sam Meek was always dressed to the nines. And they came up to him and searched him and he had one dollar. He said, you sissy SOB. Clarence said, fifty dollars worth of clothes and a necktie. And if that's all you got, keep it. Later on, he reported that they ordered some ice cream in a restaurant on 25 and 11. Took their time eating it while cars passed them. And they even paid for it and tipped the girl. On August the 8th, the men had made it back in the Knoxville. And they had managed to shoot an officer in the cheek while being pursued. Governor Hill McAllister, who was in Knoxville on business during the chase, said that he would post up $1,000 for the capture of Clarence Bunch. Gus McCoy would also give himself up on August the 8th, as he was weak from the loss of blood, several wounds, and an almost continuous fight over the last couple of weeks. On August the 10th, it was reported that the marauding Bunch gang had attempted to kidnap a lady and steal her car on Gay Street. However, one of her companions and a police officer came around the corner hearing the commotion. One got away, and one was captured, but he was not named. Now, I'm going to skip ahead a few days here, because between the 10th and the 20th, the Bunch and his gang were involved in a large number of robberies and holdups. On August the 23rd, 1934, Clarence Bunch, the Fox of the Mountains, is shot to death after officers surrounded a house at 2852 Lay Avenue, North Knoxville, after getting a tip that he was there. Bunch would be shot down when officers say that he jerked a pistol out of the holster of Sheriff Sam Roach of Granger County, who was with him at the time. The men were being escorted out of the house by city policemen Carl Bunch and J.C. Franklin. Knox County Sheriff J. Wesley Brewer arrested Sheriff Roach on the charges of aiding a criminal to escape. Roach was later released on bond and denied the charges placed against him, and claimed, I came to get him. I'd only been there a few minutes, but Sheriff Brewer maintained that he had been there all day. After going into the coroner, it was reported that Bunch had been shot somewhere between 23 and 30 times. There were conflicting reports. I was told by some bystanders that Bunch had never even reached for a gun, but that he was shot, went down, and then the officers kept shooting him, ending a career of crime that involved dozens, if not into the hundreds, of innocent bystanders in several banks and many businesses. Many legends would spring up around him, and some called him a modern-day Robin Hood, as he would rob food stands and throw the money to the ground for others to have. Keep in mind this is in the middle of the Great Depression. Some folks, money was a scarcity. It was told that even old folks would be on their hands and knees picking up pennies that he would drop out of those food stands. It is told that if he robbed a man and he had only a dime, Bunch would give him money. It is also told that if they robbed a man and he had only a dime, then they would gun him down. Now being that he was never put on trial, we will never know 
Sheriff Roach's role in this, or even who the outlaw sheriff may have been. The rest of his gang was captured in the following days, with one of them being captured somewhere near Chicago. Now, I hope you all enjoyed this video, and I'll catch you guys next time. Thanks for watching.